Hi, my name is Allison Liu, and I'm a sophomore in the College of Arts and Sciences studying neuroscience. This summer, I was given the opportunity to work in the Morgan Lab on a study titled Adaptive Optics Imaging for the Study of Retinal Photoreceptors. Through this project, I not only learned how to handle an adaptive optics scanning laser ophthalmoscope, or AOSLO for short, but I also learned how to process and analyze the images obtained by the system for the study of retinal structures of healthy and diseased patients. To provide a brief overview of what adaptive optics is, it is a technology that when added onto a typical optical device can allow for greater resolution of the subcellular properties of the retina. It can do this by correcting for visual aberrations which distort the light being reflected back from the retina and lens of the living eye. From this raw data obtained with the AOSLO, I was able to create montaged images which allowed for further visualization of the regions to be studied, beginning with the fovea, the region of highest visual acuity, and branching out into all four arms. For this poster, I selected one out of the 15 control montages I created to display in comparison with the three choroideremia, or CHM for short, montages I also compiled. CHM is an X-linked genetic disorder which results in the progressive degeneration of the photoreceptor and choroid underlying layers, leading ultimately to tunnel vision in its latest stages. Typical phenotypes of CHM include the presence of cysts, outer retinal tubulations, and atrophied regions, all of which are displayed in at least one of the three montages in the center here. The first montage in the upper left corner is the left eye of a normal sighted control subject. As you can see, the shape of each cell in the mosaic is clearly defined, and the white dots, which are wave reflecting cones, are densely packed closer to the fovea and increase in size as the distance from the fovea increases. One montage over to the right, you can see that the cone pattern of this young CHM patient is comparable to that of the normal sighted subject. In the nasal arm, however, you can see that the bottom half of the magnified image is beginning to atrophy, a clear sign of the CHM phenotype beginning to register. The atrophy regions are larger in the patient right below, beginning to manifest in the superior and nasal arms as well. In addition, the atrophied regions are closer in eccentricity to the fovea, which reflects the clinical nature of the disease, which begins with vision loss in the periphery and gradually leads to greater and greater loss of vision. You can also see in this patient the formation of tiny cysts in the choroid layer, as well as the abnormal reflectance of light by the loss of cones in the atrophied region. The last patient in the bottom right shows the most advanced case of CHM, with the border of atrophy enveloping most of the retina. You can see how outer retinal tubulations are beginning to form and how clusters of cysts are forming in the choroid layer. This signals end-stage degeneration for the retina in those specific regions, and these results demonstrate how CHM is a disease which becomes more and more severe over time. With these results in the future, I would conduct cone size and density analyses to better quantify the differences between normal sighted and choroideremia cone mosaics, as well as study how various structures within the retina degenerate over the span of one CHM patient's lifetime. Ultimately, this inspires further examination into the relationship between the structure and function of photoreceptors in health and disease.